Good morning, folks. There are only two key science stories to cover today from the journals. Both require a bit of explanation. We've got top items in weather and space weather as we begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star was very calm and quiet, with the southern active region being the only real item of note in terms of solar flaring or the potential to affect the solar wind. That solar wind is very calm and quiet right now, minor fluctuations only along with the geomagnetic conditions remaining in the green. Let's get a quick look at the official Solar Cycle 25 Ensemble forecast from NOAA. We have spent the last four years showing over a hundred predictions of the upcoming solar cycle from scientists across the world. This is where most have ended up falling, including our own. Another weak cycle just like the last one. It will give us some solar flares and CMEs, but it may be the last gasp before we potentially drop into grand minimum for cycle 26. Let's watch lightning dance across the U.S. yesterday evening, feeding into the tropical storm in the Gulf, exploding over the Rockies where we caught 50 mile an hour wind gusts here in parts of Colorado Springs. The tropical storm really developed yesterday, gaining form into what is already drenching parts of the coastline well before the core of the system makes landfall. It is going to run due northward up through the states and likely to even drench parts north of the border up in Canada. Meanwhile, it won't offer any help to drought-stricken regions in the states, sneaking right by them. Also want to mention the worst drought in decades is hitting parts of Brazil, hitting the bean and corn production the hardest, and there's also considerable drought in select portions of Wales and Scotland. Fire danger rising fast there. We begin with some of the pleadings of Douglas Vote from the Diehold Foundation, which we have joined, that they re-examine lunar samples to look for fission tracks and dust blasted out by the previous solar nova. He stood alone for so long, and now with the observers at his back, in arguably the world's most prestigious astrophysical publication, two more have joined his request. Doctors Loeb and Siraj from the Department of Astronomy at Harvard University are calling for the investigation of moon soil for that dust of those nova events, which they say are nearby, and that's a bit of an understatement. Given that we know that this dust didn't get out of the nova nebula shell, it is trapped, destroyed if it crosses the shock wave, and is thus incarcerated within the nova zone. If you recall the little graphic we showed yesterday, those isotopes in the first data column would be attached to that dust, and of course, it would be from the solar micronova progenitor. Now let's come to Earth, or rather, the effects of a super flare on Earth. Some of the top names in solar terrestrial physics are in on this one, showing that due to the solar energetic proton bombardment in major solar storms, there can be a vast increase in joule heating of the atmosphere, and the global electric circuit energy can be amplified by 30 times. Not 30%, 30 times. This is because the global electric circuit travels through the vertical pressure cell columns, up to the ionosphere which is intimately controlled by space weather events. This affects surface pressure, induced atmospheric heating, cloud cover, precipitation, and atmospheric electricity. Their model predicts lower effects at lower latitudes, but there is reason to suspect otherwise, since the compression of the CME impact increases the plasma density and narrows the pathway for the current, forcing particles into the upper atmosphere and exciting the equatorial electrojet. Indeed, numerous correlations of weather and climate with space weather are centered in the tropical region. If you haven't seen our climate forcing movie, it's everything you don't hear about what controls the weather. It is linked right below this video, it's on our channel homepage and at suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, don't forget your podcast is up from yesterday under Fly on the Wall. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.